Metro County. I'm Margaret Langley. And the book we're going to talk about today um, is kind of brought more tales from the graveyard shift. It's the second book that I wrote. Um, after I wrote the first one, I just enjoyed it so much. I you know, wanted to tell some more stories and I had a lot of people ask questions. Found out some more information about the stories that were in the first book. So I felt very compelled to write a second one. And currently, I am working on a third book. And the name of it is yet to be determined, but it is going to be a comic book. Um, so um, I appreciate y'all coming out tonight. And uh, it's very, very nice. I'm so glad that you uh, came to see me and to hear about my book. Um, I really can't talk about Haunted Robin 2 without talking about the first Haunted Robin. Um, but I'm going to tell you all how the book came to be and what made me decide to uh, write the book. Um, I'm actually saying, um, when after the first 30 days at Robin Hospital, when I came to work there, things began to happen. Uh, the lights were going on and off, we would hear moaning, people talking. Um, you could go down the hall and go through a cold spot. You, um, there just things that couldn't be explained. And be before I went to work at Broughton, no one told me. Um, I was um, in the group when they had the crunch for nurses and the state, you know, offered a scholarship to work, to, to help pay for the part of your schooling if you would promise to work for the state for a year to repay the loan. Okay, that's good. So I picked Broughton to go back to work and pay for my loan. Had no clue. Not a ghost hunter, never have been. Not really now, but do am more interested now and pay more attention now than I did back then. But a lot of the things that happened were just like literally shown to me. I feel like it was given to me a gift, maybe, if you will, the things that I was allowed to see. Um, but a lot of people wonder how the term graveyard shift came to be. And I did a little research also to just let you know how the word graveyard shift came to be. Uh, way back in the day, uh, they made beer mugs out of a lead-like substance, and people would go into long comas if they drank out of them too much. So um, they, they had no technology to determine if a person was actually dead or not, and so what they would do is they would bury them with a string tied to their finger and attached to a bed on the ground, and the, they would put a watch after someone had been buried for at least 24 hours or so to see if that person came back to life. And the person who would um, be sitting in the grave at night would be the graveyard shift. So um, that's how they called, they came to get that. If the person woke up and they did ring the bell, that's how they got to say the dead ringer. Oh. <laughs> um, and also uh, saved by the bell. <laughs> so uh, that's just a little bit of uh, trivia there. But uh, back to the story. Uh, when I graduated from nursing school, there weren't many nurses uh, around, so it seemed like that to me. And I had gone to college and received a scholarship. So um, pretty quick, things started happening. The first thing that happened to me is in January of 1994, they had the big snow here. We all got snowed in. If you were at work, you stayed, right? Because people couldn't get in. And uh, so I had to spend the night in the nurse's dorm, which is, by the way, very, very haunted. The nurse's dorm is an old building that's on the edge of the highway. Um, I'm not sure the name of the street now. I've been away here for so long, but it's on the outer edge of Broughton Hospital's campus. And it, um, the street goes by and goes right to off exit 104. Um, I was in there, I was asleep, and something woke me up. I was terrified. Something, it felt like it was just on me. I couldn't get through my head what was going on. I just felt very, very afraid. Crack the door to get the light to come in and still didn't have a better feeling. Um, that was one of the first things that happened to me when I was there when I had to stay and it made me think at that point in time that there was something really going on. But um, anyway, since 1875, Rotten Hospital has been the source of community gossip and speculation. It has also been a place of healing and comfort for people too. A long time ago, back in the uh, 1870s, 1880s, after the hospital got underway, Dr. Murphy um, felt like it was a community facility, and they would have dances on Friday nights. And he would extend an invitation to Morganton, that people live here, and they were invited to come out and dance to the dances on Friday nights. So he tried to involve the community in every way possible. 
There are tunnels that go underneath Broughton Hospital. They extend all the way from Broughton Hospital all the way to the Iverson Road Center. I didn't know that. I just found that out recently. Before I used to say no, but now I do know that they had um, pipe chases, what they call where they would pump heat and air or whatever over to the JRS and River. I don't know that they ever transported patients through those tunnels, but they do happen. And it's unbelievable that the system of tunnels that is underneath Broughton. I have been privileged to go down there and look at the tunnels and see. They took me in the nice ones to see them, uh, but there are bad worse ones, I'm sure, but they were pretty spooky, but nothing happened to me while I was down there. I have to say um, that I could say <laughs> for sure. Um, given the chance and with a EVP and maybe sitting in the dark or something, maybe so, but they didn't show anything. I didn't see anything. Um, anyway, I began writing about Rome Hospital out of desire to record the paranormal events that happened to me and the tales that were told by other people that who worked at the Grand Old Lady. Uh, throughout the years, Rome Hospital has been a place for hope for many and terror for a few. And just like the layers of paint that are on the walls, that um, time and space have a way of covering up the past. So I felt like if I didn't record some of the tales that were told to me, passed down from staff member to staff member, and then things that actually happened to people who were working with me and me myself as a first-hand event, that they would be lost forever. And somehow I just did, that didn't agree with me. Well, I wanted them to record some of the history of the hospital. Uh, there are a lot of people who um, miss a paranormal event. Uh, either they're ignored or they just don't uh, see what's going on. Um, I am not a ghost hunter. I did not ask to see things, ghosts, before they happened. But I believe with my whole heart that the spirits of patients, workers, doctors, nurses, everyone who has had anything wedged through the hospital or attached to the hospital in any way, a long time ago, people were brought there, dropped off, and they never came back to get them. I believe those people are still attached to that facility, and that is part of the reason why it is haunted. Or I don't know a better word to say. I think the spirits attach themselves to the building, and they're still there. I, for one, have seen one. I have seen several things that could not be explained. And um, I recorded things that I have seen in my books, and I'm currently in the process of taking stories from people whose family members have worked there and have told a true story or know something that happened to them. I'm asking for people to come forward and give me their stories. And then in this book, my next book, I'm going to give people credit for their story and let them know, let the public know my grandmother was a nurse or whatever, and she saw this. I think it will make it so much more meaningful. I believe that with the new hospital that's being built, that we need to do everything we can to preserve the old Broughton Hospital. Uh, the building itself is a Kirk Ride building, and a lot of people don't know this, but a long time ago they used to think that insanity was contagious, and you could catch it like the common cold. So, um, what this doctor, his name is Dr. Kirkbride, designed a building that would alleviate that problem. The way he built it was with the center building and with wings staggering off. And he built it so that fresh air could blow literally straight through each wing and thereby blowing out all the insanity. <laughs> so actually by being a patient in the hospital, you were, that was a cure towards your getting better, just to be in the facility. They believed that back then. <laughs> I always say that must not have lasted very long, but you know, they did try. And um, in my first book, my Haunted Broughton Book One, first tales from the Great Airship, I list the history of the Broughton Hospital. I also talk about bizarre treatments that they used to do for mental illness. And then I carry forward with other stories in the second book, true accounts of things that happened at Broughton Hospital that might possibly be why it's haunted, or you know, some of the things that I think could have happened that would cause it to be um, a pure psychic, paranormal place. I don't know how else to say a hospital. It's just, it's been, um, so many people have gone through there and so many spirits are still there. And the only way I can say to you that I know that's true is because I've literally seen hundreds of orbs in a picture that I took. And an orb is described as a spirit or Proof that there, you know, there is a ghost or something. I'm not sure how they 
people who take pictures of things that are paranormal and catch a orb every once in a while. I have literally seen so many orbs in a picture that it looked like it was snow. And that was very frightening <laughs> because I, I've never seen such a thing in my life and uh, other people I've talked to is very rarely ever seen. So I feel like there's a lot of spirit life there. Um, one of the things that scared me the most, one of the first scary things that happened to me at Broadway Hospital, um, I'm just going to tell you a story straight out. I used to work in the Thomas Building, which is a big flat building towards the um, south side of the campus. And uh, when I first went to work there, and they probably still do, but you had to sign out on, on a piece of paper that didn't have a spike card or any kind of time sheet like that. And, um, so I went to go sign out one night, and um, I was in this building all by myself, and oddly enough, the building's called the Bates Building, right? So, okay, I heard that there's <laughs> kind of scary. Um, so I went there signing out my time, and getting ready to go on vacation. I've got a few days here in Texas. And all of a sudden, I hear a lady's voice, and she's so close to me that she could probably, and probably is touching me. And I hear her right here in my right ear, and she says, <laughs> At that point, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know if my heart stopped beating, but I did know my blood pressure must have hit the ceiling because it felt like somebody shoved a prod at the back of my neck. And I finished running. I don't know why I didn't run. I just finished signing out my time sheet, got up, and walked over there and placed it at the nurse at the supervisor's desk, and I walked out. So that was an unbelievable event. And I know that I wasn't hearing things. I'm not, I'm not prone to hear things. And um, if you ever talk to me very often, you might know my hearing's not that good anyway. So, I mean, it was definitely someone coming in. It's pretty unnerving. Mm. One of the most unnerving things that ever